Ladies and gents, it's TNG. In this video, we're going to be answering the question of what exactly is a ghoul. Now, for all the people that have come into the Fallout universe via the games, you'll no doubt know the answer to that question. However, to the rest of you that are here because of the Fallout TV show, you're probably wondering what happened to Walton Goggins. Well, let's find out, shall we? It's actually quite interesting. So, Walton Goggins' character, if you haven't guessed it, is indeed a ghoul. Now, it's all well and good saying that, but what exactly is one? To put it simply, guys, it's a human that's been exposed to radiation. A lot of um, radiation. The kind of levels you'd expect if nuclear warheads had been thrown about. I refer you to the title of this series. While radiation does play a massive part, though, it isn't the only factor. There's a lot of different theories that get floated around in Fallout, whether it's the amount of radiation, the amount of time you're exposed to it, is it a genetic thing? Truth be told, nobody actually knows, right? I mean, for Christ's sake, in Fallout 4, there's even a ghoul who literally got turned into such because he got too high. Like, seriously, he took a drug that was so radioactive, it turned him into this. Um, <laughs> fair play, Hancock. Fair play to you, mate. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, while we don't know the exact prequisites that are needed to become a ghoul, radiation is definitely one of the key factors. Without that, you ain't becoming one. So now we've worked out what exactly a ghoul is, and we've somewhat worked out how one's created, is there anything interesting that I can tell you about them? Well, it just so happens that yes, there is. And believe it or not, it's not actually um, all negative. There is some positives about going through this transformation. And you know what? Sod it, actually. We'll start off with some of the good things about being ghoulified. The main one being the ability to live for bloody ages. Take, for example, the aforementioned Walton Goggins ghoul here. Now, yes, I'm guessing that some of you have already clocked this, but for those that haven't, and I don't know why I wouldn't have seen this actually now I come to think of it, Cooper Howard, the guy that you see at the beginning at the little kid's birthday party, that is him. That is the same guy. So going off that, by the time we see him in post-war America, you know, where he's bounty hunting and whatnot, he is well over 200 year old. And he isn't exclusive to that either. There is loads of them in the wasteland that were, you know, alive before the bombs dropped. We're not going to go over them in this video, but if you play the games, you'll know exactly who I'm on about. Now, as well as ghouls living for an extremely long time, they do also have some other benefits. Um, they're resistant to most diseases, including cancer. Radiation does in fact heal a ghoul as well, which is, um, yep, great benefit in a radiated wasteland. Mm -hmm. While they do need to eat, sleep, and, you know, do other bodily functions, they don't have to do it as often, so it seems. And you know what, personally, I consider that a massive benefit. The amount of times I've got speeding tickets for trying to get home to have a dump is actually unreal. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. While speed a ghoul is cool to reduce your need to stool, um, there is some negatives, and um, we'll cover them now, actually. The most obvious downside to being a ghoul is the fact you are effectively a rotting corpse. You'll notice, for example, that all the ghouls I've shown you in this video don't have noses, the skin looks pretty crap, unless you're Walton Goggins, of course, as is absolutely fantastic for some unknown reason. Maybe it's... Uh... Maybelline. Ah, I'm sorry, that were terrible. In game, they all have really damaged voices as well. They sound very croaky and um, raspy, I think the best uh, description is for it. Yeah, basically, ghouls, they are, like I say, a rotting corpse. The only people they've got to be welcome around is Jeffrey Dahmer. And again, in the games, we see them being shunned quite a lot. To the point where they actually make their own communities. Again, I'm not going to go into that. If you do want to see a more in-depth video on ghoul lore, then please let me know in the comments. But for now, we're going to stick to the basics. And one of the most terrifying things about being a ghoul is the fact that 99.9% .9 of them will become feral at some point. Now, what do I mean by this? You may have actually heard it referenced in the graveyard scene in the TV show. Feral ghouls are quite simply ghouls whose brains have been rotted so much by radiation, they are practically wild animals. They're aggressive, they attack without warning, they are literally, yeah, animals, no longer the humans they once were. I've not actually seen any of these in the Fallout show, because I've only watched the uh, two first episodes so far, but I do think I saw one in the trailer, 
when that was released, but I could be wrong. Trust me, when you see one, if one does appear, you'll know about it. They are absolutely psychotic. And alas, guys, that is how every single ghoul will eventually end up. I think it was said in the games a number of times, there is no stopping it. While it can be held off by, you know, ghouls actually socialising with people, yeah, that, that is the fate that all of them are going to meet. Anyhow, I hope you've uh, found this video interesting. It's just a quick insight into um, what they actually are and how they come about. And if you do want to see more, like I said, let me know down in the comments. As we say in the north, I will love you and leave you. And I'll catch you at next one. Have fun, everybody.